Hey, Nicole Holland here. You're listening to episode 31 of the Business Building Rockstar Show. You're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, where your host, Nicole Holland, gets the lowdown from today's most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs on what it really takes to reach rockstar status. Do you want to get your message out in a bigger way by being a guest on a web show or podcast just like this? If you do, text the letters, I am ready to 33444 and I will send you free of charge a guide called How to Be a Great Guest. Don't make rookie mistakes that so many people do when they're starting out. Get known as a great guest that hosts search for for free by texting I am ready to 33444. So to spell that out, it's the letters I M R E A D Y to 33444. And I will send you a complimentary copy of my guide, How to Be a Great Guest. My guest today is Dove Gordon, and he shares with me how to systematically and consistently attract first-rate clients. Dove is perhaps the most well-known and well-respected curator of top-notch collaborative entrepreneurs and runs a very well-regarded online mastermind that he shares the secrets behind why it works and how it got started. He also shares with me his trust tried and true strategies and tactics that normally he only shares with his paying clients. You're sure to get tons of valuable, valuable information from this episode. Make sure you have a pen and paper handy. Without further ado, here we go. Hey there, entrepreneur. Thanks for tuning into the Business Building Rockstar Show. I am hanging out today with Dove Gordon and so excited to have him here on the show. Dove helps consultants, experts, and small professional service firms build a steady, consistent, predictable flow of ideal clients. For several years, Dove led a CEO peer advisory group that attracted the CEOs of many leading companies with between $10 million and $150 million in annual sales. At a number of these and other companies, Dove worked side by side with senior management to reformulate their company's strategy and or to redesign and develop the management organization. In 2010, Dove earned his attention to helping small business entrepreneurs who love what they do, but who are in trouble attracting a consistent flow of ideal clients. He helps these owners build a simple marketing and selling system that brings in all the clients that they want. And Dove, it's so exciting for me to have you here today. Thank you for joining me. Are you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. Fantastic. So I gave a bit of an intro, uh, talked about your bio there, and I'd love for you to give us a little bit more information about what it is that you do day to day and how you help your uh, your clients. Um, there are lots of people who are really good at what they do. Uh, really good consultants, coaches, experts. Um, they're not as good at, you know, getting clients. I mean, they have a high degree of confidence in their ability to help people. That's up here. Their degree of confidence in in their ability to convey that to others in a way that, you know, those others realize they should pay for this valuable service is very low. And we help bring that up so that um, they're able to consistently attract ideal clients. And it's pretty straightforward work, actually. Simple, not always easy, but simple. Awesome. And how long have you been doing this kind of work for where you're really focusing on the, the small business owner? Well, it's, uh, as you said, since about 2010. Okay. Uh, before that, I was uh, working with larger companies. Um, I put together a CEO peer advisory group where we had CEOs from those companies who come to learn from each other. My intention was that that would be a, a way to get my foot in the door for larger consulting projects. But... Um, I had some success with that. There was some success, but it, there was a lot of frustration. And eventually I came to realize that I, uh, what I didn't know, I didn't know. Um, and at that point, I started, things started to fall into place into my head. And uh, for a variety of reasons, I decided to shift my focus. And that's been slowly but surely. We've been building that for the last, I guess, like seven years probably about. Cool. And can we jump into that a little bit about what was shifting and why you decided to to move from what you were doing into this new area? Well, was it? I mean, it. You know, let's say the whole thing has been an evolution since two thousand and one. You know, when I started. So let's say fifteen or so years ago. 
right? Um, I have no college degree. Um, you know, I have no, um, I've studied, you know, anywhere I can. I'm constantly studying and reading and, and um, you know, working with the best mentors and coaches that I could find. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars in my own coaching in the last year. Um, and it was a great deal, you know? Um, so it's like, you know, but, but the thing is that nobody, you know, for better or for worse, I never had, um, I never had a real job, you know? So there's, um, been a lot of learning on the, learning on the job, learning while building this. And, uh, you know, I'd say the first seven, eight years or so were really, uh, frustrating. I mean, to be at a place where you know you have so much to offer, where you know that your intentions are good, where you know that if people would just give you a chance, you really could do a good job for them, and not, it's like the silent scream. You know, you're not able to articulate uh, what that is. Like, like, how do I express this in a way that people get it, that I'm not like everybody else, that I really, you know, this is different. You know, it's just the is that it's like being locked up in a in a box, um, and that was a big struggle for a long time because you know I, I, it seems to me that there's and this is a generalization and maybe a, an oversimplification that there's there's really two tracks to building an expertise based build a business. One is where it's you know kind of built on on a charismatic personality, and there's a lot of that, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Although if somebody relies too much on their charismatic personality, there's also a crutch. If you don't have underlying skill as well, the time will come when you know you're gonna you're gonna fall. Um, the other approach is based on mastery, where you you learn and master the underlying skills, and that's that's the approach that I've had to take because I'm not this charismatic personality, um, and that's fine because most of my clients aren't either, so we're a good fit. Uh, although. Some of them might be bigger personalities, but uh, it, it's not what they're looking to rely on. You know, it's not what they're able to, it's not where they're going. So through a lot of trial and error, I've been able to really distill down to um, what I think of as simplicity on the far side of complexity to um, borrow a term from, um, I forget his name right now. Uh, I can't believe I forget his name, but I forget his name all the time, even though I quote him all the time. Um, uh, it ends with junior and and you know and, and and then help other people master the same thing so people are able to really master the skills to a high level in a much shorter amount of time because i've uh, i've lived through it for them that's so great I, I and share some of that if you want Depends definitely you. yeah please do so the here's what i realized like you ask the purpose of you ask most people what's the purpose of your marketing and selling system and they'll tell you it's to fill your pipeline right or it's to build your funnel right funnels are hot right so it's to build your funnel it's to fill your pipeline it's to close deals it's to get leads right but i think that's not really the answer i think that's true that's the oversimplified answer the we're looking for simplicity on the far side of complexity. That's where mastery is, and that's where consistent clients are. So I think that the purpose of your marketing and selling system is to answer the number one question on your prospect's mind at just the right time. Now, that requires a little explanation, because if it was so simple, oversimplified, everybody would nod their head and like, oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's to fill my pipeline. Yeah, I got to close deals. The problem with that answer is that you don't know what to do next. So you spend your days and weeks and months doing some of this, running in that direction, and then you know, it works a little, doesn't work, you back off, run in that direction like the Roomba vacuum cleaner. Hits a wall, bounces off, goes another direction. It's a chair leg, bounces off, goes another direction. This is how most experts, consultants, coaches, professional service firms are building their, are trying to market their business. Why? Because they're trying to build a pipeline. They're trying to build a funnel so that they can get leads and close deals, right? But that doesn't tell them what to do. But when you realize that the purpose of everything you do is to answer the number one question in your prospect's mind at just the right time, if you know the questions, you know what to do. Okay, let me illustrate that. So there are only three questions that your ideal client is asking themselves. And, if, and your marketing and selling system has to help them answer yes to this question. The first question is when they come across your message, whatever tactic you use, doesn't matter if it's Facebook ads, if it's the blimp, if it's a sandwich board on a street corner or AdWords or a speaking at a conference, these are all just tactics. They all work and they all fail. 
and we have to learn to ignore the method specific experts lined up around the block everybody telling well each one every tactic has their own line of experts so facebook has their line of experts and linkedin is their line and everybody's saying you got to do my thing because otherwise you know you're doomed the truth is they all work and they all fail and you got to understand why they work when they work why they fail when they fail if we have time we can get to that but the first question regardless of what tactic you use people are asking themselves should i pay attention is it interesting so they come across you're giving a talk at a conference their brain goes should i pay attention is it interesting should i attend your breakout session or that breakout session okay the um the second question if 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 you do this right then they their brain quickly goes oh yeah that is interesting right that is interesting and there and then quickly their brain has another question which is all right you got me interested but who are you can i trust you are you for real so it's essentially can i trust you you got me interested but can i trust you and if their brain concludes based on your marketing and selling system that yes i can trust you then they have instantly they have a third and final question is what you recommend right for me is what you recommend right for me and if they conclude yes it's right for me congratulations you have a new client so again the purpose of your marketing and selling system is to help your ideal client answer yes to their number one question on their mind at just the right time in order so what happens if we walk up to somebody and we start you know they ask you what you do and we start talking about what we do and try to tell them all about how great it is and they should buy it right they should sign up for it well what we're doing is which is there there, there are subtle and not so subtle ways that we do this mistakenly right you know sometimes it's, it's obvious sometimes it's really only obvious in retrospect but the, you know the the problem is that they're not asking themselves is what you recommend right for me their first ask they haven't even gotten a yes answer to is what you're talking about interesting right should i pay attention to interesting they're still thinking how do i get out of here right so we're trying to answer the wrong question in the wrong order at the wrong time so um anyway so so this is what we mean by the purpose of your marketing and selling system is to answer the number one question at just the right time on the process mind because now i know what to do I know that their first question is going to be, should I pay attention? It's interesting. I know that I need to put something in place to make sure that I'm earning their attention and their interest. Okay. I know what to do. Next question is going to be, once I earn their attention and interest, the next question is going to be, all right, who are you? You got me interested. Can I trust you? I know that I need to put something into place to be able to earn their trust. And then finally, their question is going to be, okay, I see I can trust you. So you seem to know your stuff. You also seem to care, right? Not just trying to sell me something and run away. But okay, is what you recommend right for me? I need to be able to package and present my offer in such a way that will lead people to, like that the right people are more likely to say yes than to say no because how you package and present something, how you lead a sales conversation and then how you package and present it will very much affect how they answer that. So that's the sales part and whether it's one-to-one -one or one-to-many on a webinar. So those are the, the um, these are really the kinds of, uh, that's the purpose of the marketing and selling systems. What we do is we we've broken it down so that there are really two things that you need to do to help answer each question. There's two pieces that you need to put into place. Can you say something? So, yeah, let me ask you. So this is a phenomenal. Like you're giving so much value right now. I really really appreciate it, and I know the listeners are getting a lot out of this. I'm I'm wondering when you had the light bulb moment about the selling system because when you you talked earlier about you had some success in the industry that you were in and then you made a shift and you are killing it now and i mean you are the go-to guy and everybody knows that that this system works and you get rave reviews so i'm wondering what that kind of light bulb moment was for you when you realized either you're selling to the wrong people or maybe you had that experience yourself where you uncovered those questions well I honestly don't remember the light bulb moment for those questions, but I'll say this. I'll say I do remember years ago sitting in a coffee shop, figuring out and talking to a client, walking them through a simple model when I was doing strategy work and I developed something, um, which I still think today is probably, till today, one of the clearest models on that, although I don't do that much of strategy work anymore, but the day will probably come when we go back to it. Um, and, and my real answer to you is not, and, and I think it's important for people to understand this, it's not like there's always a light bulb moment. It's more that you have to just push through the fog until you get to the clearing. And momentarily, you'll, you'll get that insight. 
and then it's like when the lightning flashes and you can see where you are and then you make sure you take it all in and kind of bottle it so that you can keep going and build on it. It's, um, it's not so much, and, and, and one lightning flash is never enough. It's just gonna take you to the next few steps or you know, depending on how rocky the, the terrain you're on at the moment is, right? So that's how I think about it. I think that you know, we, I created a manual it's called How to Systematically and Consistently Attract First-Rate Clients, which for five years we sold, which I'm happy to give away for free if, if you want. Um, and like I remember I worked on that for six intensive weeks, half a day, three, four hours working at it. And the hard work was the, the thinking work, the formulation, the outlining, and then the details. And in my case, it's, it's 82 pages. The value there is in what it doesn't include. The value in there is all the stuff that we left out. I always focus on the critical 10% that makes you the brilliant 90% of the time. With everybody out there selling information and you know by volume, you know I want to talk to those who realize, okay, I know enough. I'm not missing information. <laughs> yeah, there's something else that I'm missing, and that's what we provide. Right? Awesome. So, what would you say has been your best strategy for, for getting through that fog? In the times on your journey, as you were coming up to your rock star entrepreneur status, what have you found to be best practices for you to get your mindset correct and, and, and move forward through the tough times? Um, that's a good question. I, I think that what most people are missing, and, and this is, again, I mean, this is what I've learned over time is that most people, and this was true for me for a long time, um, is that you don't have a clear process. They don't, they, they don't have a plan that they believe in, that if I follow these steps, then I will attract my ideal clients consistently. If I do ABC, 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 I'll get D leads and you'll become clients again and again. And so what happens is that we're going out and just doing lots of things like we said before. We're doing what all the experts tell us to do. Right, or we think we are, we're trying to. We're doing whatever they tell us to do, not getting the results, and not quite sure why. And the answer is, is because um, we're, ju we're just kind of following a, a plan that we don't really believe in, we don't really understand it. See, almost nobody understands what, what we just talked about before. Almost nobody understands what the real purpose of their marketing and selling system is. So they're going out and doing all sorts of activity. But the get noticed part is step four. It's the fourth piece that comes, right? And if, the, if, if you don't do the first three parts, the foundational piece, and you jump straight to the tactical, it's not going to work because then they're dealing with all the tactics. It's like a, you know, a balloon that you're filling with hot air instead of helium. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you say that. And I just want to really highlight that for our listeners, that if you jump to step four and you're trying to get noticed, which most entrepreneurs that I've worked with do, that's the big thing. It's like, okay, I'm going to start a business. I got this training. I got this little certificate. And now I want to get noticed and get my people. If you don't know why you're doing it, if you don't have those foundational pieces, if you don't even know who your ideal clients are, you are setting yourself up for failure every time. Absolutely. So... Like the, I, I suppose to try to answer your question, like for me, a big turning point was when I came to understand um, that there's a small number of things that I need to do. That, and I came up with this plan that actually I can actually believe in. See, you know, I have clients of all types of expertise, coaching, consulting, and so on. I have a client who's an aquaculture engineer. I never heard of that before he became a client. You know, it's like sometimes people will ask me, well, have you ever worked with a, you know, um, you know, a, a business coach before, or a marketing consultant before. We've worked many, whatever. Let's say some people, maybe financial people tend to be asked that question. Have you worked with a friend, right, before? And I say, well, you know, one of my best clients is a, an aquaculture engineer, and I can promise you I've only worked with one, you know. Anyway, it's the wrong question for most people to ask. But that's what we ask anyway, because everybody – has some version of is what you recommend right for me, right? That's where that falls in. You know, they're at that point where they need, they need to feel comfortable. Um, the way we master our craft is not the way we're trying to master marketing. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I want to get to, right? If you're learning deep sea diving or how to play a piano, or how to do brain surgery, or even how to, you know, remove an ingrown toenail. Okay. Something more minor, I suppose, although I, I wouldn't want to do either. Um, 
too squeamish. But my point is that there is, we, we, when we would never try to learn any of those things the way we're trying to learn marketing and sales, right? Marketing and sales, oh, I need more clients. How am I gonna get more clients? Let's see, so this one says do that. I'll watch this webinar, that webinar, that webinar, that. and everybody's telling me something else, and everybody's telling me the same thing. They all sound the same, they all say something different. And if you've been around, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're both true. And, and I'm trying to do everything, and I'm trying to, and I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going in circles. Why? Because look at the way they're trying to teach you. Remember I said earlier it's not more information? People don't, if the, maybe if this is the first podcast you're listening to, then okay, maybe you still need some more information. But even then, you're probably going to be taken down the wrong track. But anybody who's been studying marketing and sales for a few months or a few years or longer, and I've had clients who spend $100,000 on their marketing education before coming to us, and they finally clicked, finally got it. But anybody who's been around studying a little bit, right, you read some books, you have enough information. What you're missing is not information. You're missing an experience that will help you understand how to actually make it work for you. We can go into that at this time. But the main point that I was trying to get to is that you don't learn marketing the way most people are teaching it. You have to learn marketing and sales the same way that you learn how to, you know, mathematics, the same way you learn chemistry, the same way you learn how to play piano or go deep sea diving. And that is you start off with some basic principles. You got to understand the basics and then you have to implement, take some kind of action based on that so that you have a real world experience with it. And then you got to take those results and go back to whoever's teaching you, your mentor, your coach, whatever, and say, hey, this is what I did. I got these results. I like these results. I don't like those results. And they can instantly show you, hey, this is why you got that. This is what you have to change. And then you go back and you do it again. It's not about more and more information. It's about having an experience with the information you already have. I'm going to throw one more thing in there and then you can jump back in, all right? Most people, the reason why they get stuck with clients and so on is because they're trying to follow what they were told to do, but the whole time, because it doesn't, there's something underlying it all that doesn't make sense. So the whole time their brain is going, gee, am I doing the right thing? Is this really, is this ever going to work? Um, you know, am I, am, am I, sorry, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it right? Is this ever going to work? It's usually in that order, right? And and what happens is because when you have this this voice, this doubt underlying everything you're doing, am I doing the right thing? Is it ever going to work? Am I doing it right? So when you hit a wall, you're going to bounce off like that Roomba vacuum cleaner instead of hitting it again and hitting it again and hitting it again. But when you understand that you are doing the right thing and some of it you're doing right and some of it you need to fix and change and you have someone guiding you along, helping you have an experience of doing that's what you re that's when you really learn. We are always focused on the critical 10% that makes you look brilliant 90% of the time. You don't need a lot of information. You need a little bit of information, and then you need to have to actually learn it, to master it, you need an experience of it. And that you're not going to get from a book, that you're not going to get from a course, from a training program, from anything that you'll only get when you have somebody who, who has mastered what you're trying to master, who can guide you along, just like you learned in your core area of expertise. When you've mastered your craft, whatever it is, piano, surgery, that's how you learned. Very cool. Marketing and sales will not be any different. Ah, awesome. So, Dove, who has been the most inspiring mentor in your life and in your in your journey? Whew, um, most inspiring. I've learned from many people, including some of them on the wall, um, who are long dead. Um, you know, I've I've really enjoyed reading about him. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, that is. Um, what's his? Edmund Mars has a trilogy biography, amazing, well written. Um, him as well, Abraham Lincoln, um, George Washington. Where's that over there? <laughs> um, you know, I've I've learned from lots of people. I learned from Alan Weiss, uh, people who are alive. I learned from David Nagel. I learned from. Um, I know there are others. Those popped into my mind. Uh, I have got you know some. I've grown a network, so I've got some really good friends who I learned a lot from, uh, Danny Inney. Um, well, can yeah. we talk about that for a second? Um, sure. Because something that I find very interesting and impressive is your network and how you've created this online mastermind of sorts or this very exclusive group where you share and support each other. Can you explain what that is and how you came up with the idea to do this? Okay, so I'm not. You know, I know I've talked about it 
from here and there, but I don't necessarily make a big deal about it. So I'm not quite sure what you heard, but I'll happily try to answer your well, question. I, I mean, I know a few of the people in your group. So, and mm. they, you know, you, they sing your praises and they feel that their businesses have grown in large part due to the connections that you have fostered and the support that you've provided on top of your business. I mean, that's, that's great to hear. Um, well, when I made that transition, about seven years ago, I decided that my tactic of choice was going to be joint venture teleseminars because I know that when you do a joint venture and let's say someone sends you someone to your list and then they buy something, they start working with you, so then I can pay a commission, but I'm only paying after I get paid and I kind of was broke, so I needed that, right? I wasn't going to have thousands of dollars to spend on Google AdWords or whatever. Facebook advertising didn't exist then. Um, it just made a lot of sense. So I started looking around, where am I going to find a group of direct marketing savvy people using the internet to market and sell to entrepreneurs and coaches, consultants and small business owners and so on. And I joined a number of different forums and it's fascinating because every forum has its own, you know, shade of the rainbow or gray, um, depending on who, who's leading it. It's, it's fascinating. I didn't quite find what I was looking for. So I just reached out to a few people that I had met online over the years, including Ian Brody, uh, Mike Seddon, who recently passed away. They were a couple of the first ones. Um, People should look up Mike said in the last webinar on YouTube. This was the last webinar that we did before he passed away. He found that he had three months to live, well worth watching. Um, and and a few others who I don't remember exactly who the who they were, the first handful. Um, and we just, you know, I started and, and we have a monthly call for years now, uh, 90 minutes. Uh, we have a very active Google group and we've grown to about 115, 120 people around the world including some people that years ago when I started were out of reach people, at least I assume they were out of reach. What happens is, is that uh, this is how people need to think about it. And this is how I thought about it. And I know that it's different. Most people, when they're starting off, they're thinking like, how do I get to those people all the way up there? I want them to promote me. How do I get there? That wasn't my approach at all. I realized that, okay. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm, maybe some people could go from ground zero up to there, but I didn't quite see how. So, I realized, well, okay, let's just put one foot in front of the other. And, um, and I said, well, okay, let's find, I want to find people who are a little bit ahead of me or a little behind me, high quality people. To me, that means they're out there, they're doing things, they're taking risks, they're happy to share both what works and what doesn't work. We can learn from each other. Um, and, you know, so that's what I was looking for. And then we had one led to the other, people would nominate somebody else. Um, and I think at some point, you know, the group hits a certain critical mass. You're going to find somebody, you know, who will come in and is pretty well connected. And you'll find in addition to your, whoever's founding it, there's, and you know, John Corcoran is such a person. Um, great guy. Definitely been a, a great person in my life as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, small, smartbusinessrevolution.com. We can give him a plug. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and there've been others as well. I mean, there's so many really good people that we have in the group right now. I'm pleased to say. So, and, and and then just focusing on not trying to control anything. The only thing I control is who gets in and who stays in. And from time to time, I do have to drop somebody for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, I've had somebody who approached me and like, hey, Dove, if you introduce me to people in the group, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, like a second tier commission on anything. And I said, I don't work that way. If I promote you and that leads to direct business and you want to pay commission, I'm happy to do that. I mean, it's not almost none of us are doing that for the commission. Like we all want to grow our own core businesses, but we're happy to promote and be promoted because that's how we all gain. I mean, there are more people on my list who never buy from me, but they're there for a reason. So they might buy from you. And then there are those who will buy from both of us because they're looking for that. So, you know, we all gain that way. I love um, that. And, and what I've seen just from the outside looking in at the, the people in your group that I know of, they're, they're so genuinely is generous, like, and, and just willing to you know? share, willing to support without thinking tit for tat, you know? Absolutely. And that's something that I've always looked for. And it's, um, somebody suggested a member and I looked into them. I don't just, you know, right away. And, and, and I, I, re I remember that I'd had some conversation with them year, you know, six months ago and I found some things on their website to be misleading. Um, you know, I found some of what they were offering to be just kind of, it's not something that I would ever want to be a part of or promote. So I turned them down. Um, and I don't care. I, I really, I, I'm not interested in celebrity. I'm interested in mastery. I respect mastery. I think as a society, we, we, we care too much about celebrity 
and not enough about mastery. So I would sooner take in a masterful beginner than a celebrity, you know. So, you know, I mean, as a consequence, we have quite a number of celebrities uh, or people who, you know, in some circles are considered celebrities. Um, but it's not, but that's not why they're in the group because I just don't care for it. I don't know. I think that's really important to to highlight there that and it's something that I talk about a lot and most of the people who I have as guests on the summit or on the show also bring up. When you focus on your values and when you create your business and your projects around what's important to you and you don't worry about what other people think, things will totally shift and change. It's like you bring to you what you're putting out. So if you're mm -hmm. in that fear space of I have to be liked, there's a good chance you're going to bring in people who may use you, but they're not going to truly support you. And you, you might, you. right. And, and you might get aligned with somebody then who is doing something that you don't feel good about. And that was something I learned pretty early on when I started getting online. And I was like, cause at first I was you know, listening to people who were successful opposed to people who were of value, in my opinion, who were aligned mm -hmm. with my mission and, and principles. So I love that well you, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing about that. I think that's a great, uh, a great place to start wrapping things up because we are out of time and I'm happy to sit with you all day, but I'm sure you have a lot of things to do over there. Um, before no, we go, nothing. Oh, uh, not, nothing. <laughs> before we go, um, what uh, I'll give you, I've got one more question and then I'll, I'll turn it over to you to, uh, to wrap things up and let people know how to reach out to you and connect. But I'd love to know what is your uh, self care routine or strategy that keeps you on point and, and producing great results? Self care strategy or routine. I mean, um, every morning, uh, you know, after getting the kids out, I will go to my local coffee shop, get a cup of coffee. I used to get a cookie as well until about five, six weeks ago. Uh, I lost 20 pounds in the last five weeks. Get I'm not like a huge guy, but I never, I'm not, like, I'm a small guy, but I, I realized a couple of months ago, like, wow, I've, learned, I've gained 30 pounds in the last 15 years. So I uh, got pretty aggressive about that. I've never done this before, so I'm excited. Uh, it's a good thing. Um, and if, like another eight or so to get to my goal. Um, started running which I overdid. I tend to, to overdo things sometimes, apparently, because I got an ankle injury after two weeks. So now I'm waiting for that. But doing some other exercises, and I should be getting back to that in another week or two. Um, let's see. I was, ran five, five to six times a week for the first two weeks, and apparently that was too much after too long out of the game. Yeah, so, but, but I, I will go and I will sit and read and write and study and journal every, every day. Um, just about. I mean, it's not like I always journal, but I'm always going to relax in the morning with, before I go to the, you know, the first hour, uh, hour and 15 minutes. I will do some studying and some, and some writing of some kind. Uh, and, and I think that just really helps me focus. It helps me kind of recenter myself. I have, um, uh, it gives me a chance to review my priorities and so on. Um, I'll do that almost every day. So highly recommended. Yeah, definitely love that. Beautiful. So Especially the cookies. If, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I, I it, fall into the, the trap of the sugar every once in a while. But I find that really that that whether it's morning or whatever time, but I think before you start your day, just not connecting with other people and really keeping that for yourself and whatever and, and focusing on what's important to you is so so vital. Awesome. So how can people connect with you? We're at dovegordon.net, D-O-V-G-O-R-D-O-N.net, N-E-T, uh, not, not the other URL extension. If it's uh, someone else owns that, once in a while he's nice, he forwards me emails that were meant for me. So best to just, um, people can reach me by email, dovegordon at dovegordon.net, D-O-V-G-O-R-D-O-N.net. And I mentioned this manual earlier, which uh, we sold for five years. So this is not something that's valued at $97. We sold it for five years for $97. It's called How to Systematically and Consistently Attract First-Rate Clients. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, and go have a look. It's, it's really good. And if, if you go to dovegordon.net forward slash manual free, M-A-N-U-A-L free, F-R-E-E, -E, then you can get a copy of that free. And um, um, do go through it. 
people paid money for that. I had someone recently who had bought it. Email me, he's like, I can't believe you're giving that away for free. It's just, it's worth too much. So, um, you know. Very cool. So definitely, and we'll put all of those uh, links in the show notes as well. So if you're listening and you want to visit bbrshow.com, you'll find the show notes from today's episode. And Dove, thank you so, so much for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to connect with you in person, finally. Thank you, and, uh, Same here. Awesome. So I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure to subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss another episode. And if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. And if you want to catch up on past episodes, it's super easy to do when you subscribe on iTunes. Also, we're on Stitcher. And of course, you can visit bbrshow.com for all of the episodes, show notes, and more. I would love to hear what you think about today's episode by leaving a review on iTunes or also so you can go to bbrshow.com and on our show notes page, there is a comment section. Dear listeners, I do this show for you. So the more you let me know what you love, the more I can bring you that. Don't forget that the Business Building Rockstar Show releases every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So three times per week, you can listen in to what the journey towards rockstar status entrepreneurship is really like. Until next time, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you and I look forward to connecting again real soon. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this episode of the Business Building Rockstar Show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss a thing. And visit bbrshow.com for all the show notes and links to resources discussed on today's show. Plus, lots more. 